guys, check this out. So you got your own, right? It's all turned on and everything. If you let go off the top, it becomes a weapon. Whoa. As you can see, it becomes quite violent. Ah. Ah. God damn it. Car meets. You want to film them, so I'm going to teach you. How about we roll that intro? Hey again, lovely to see all your faces again. And yes, I did trip over my bin at the start of that after I clicked record. Oh well, I could leave that out, but stuff it. So this video is all about filming car meets and my top tips on how to film car meets, beating of cars, you get the point. Let's start the video. So first off, I want to say when filming a car at a car meet, it's really easy to stick close to the car because it just, I don't, it's hard to get away from cars in car meets. Step back, step back from the car, get the whole car in the shot, and there's multiple reasons why I suggest doing this. The main obvious one is the audience gets to see the whole car. That's the reason why they clicked on the videos to see the cars. So if you don't show them the whole car, it doesn't really make sense. Another reason is a car is made to be seen in whole. Like when you're looking at a car, you don't just see, say, the wheels or whatever. You see the whole car, it's all designed to all match. So that's how the owner of that car wants you to view their car. Because they're putting time and effort into the whole thing. Stepping back from the car, getting it all in the shot, leaving some space around it, it allows the audience to actually see like the fitment of the car, how low it is, how high it is, how big it is, how small it is. Like everything about the car will be in that one shot. This also leaves you room to do really nice transitions to spice up your video a little bit. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that I use lots of transitions because I like to. I reckon they make the video more interesting to look at, which is why I use them. And being able to step back from the car, let you zoom in and out, do lots of different things with that shot, it just allows a lot more transitions than if you're just right in front of the car and <laughs> you can't see anything. For example, here is a video of a meet that I filmed a little while ago and apart from being really underexposed and really crany, you can just tell that the camera is too close to all the cars, you don't really know what's going on, nothing really makes that much sense, you can't see the cars properly. So here is that one. They gon' tie you up, diamonds in my noose, you can't die with us, they don't know the truth, you can't shoot the stars, they will know it's you, what the fuck I gotta prove, scars are for my health, tattoos by myself, in a black room, don't need help, stuck in a vacuum, lie to protect you, I slide, I'm the best, do what? Now here's an example of one of my latest ones, this one I'm clearly stepping away from the cars, you can see them on a lot better, and I just think it is overall a lot nicer because I stepped back, ignoring the part that this is one is in the day, the one you just watched was in the night, and I don't really film car meets at night anymore because it doesn't work for me with my cameras. Ignoring that part, <laughs> just acknowledge that I stepped back from the cars. Anyway, just 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 play the video, just watch it. So yeah, that is a real easy, simple one. Step back from the car. Just just step away from the car. Although you do encounter one problem because you're further away from the car, people just walk in front of you and it takes longer to get the shot, which is really frustrating. Some people see you and they stop, which is, which is awesome. But the majority of people just, they just don't. They just don't look. They're too busy looking at the cars, pretty much. Another reason to get away from the car is it shows the environment. The environment around the car where the meat is is very important. Speaking of the environment, the second thing I want to talk about is getting shots of what is actually at that car meet and the stuff around it. It's actually really important. Because if your video is purely just the cars at that meet, people might be like, oh hey, cool, yep, cars, it was car meet, that's sick. But you'll find lots of car meets if they're well organized and done properly. There's other attractions that are there to invite people. A normal one is cars and coffee, so coffee. The, the Cars and Coffee down in Melbourne here, it's at an indoor go-karting track. So that's pretty cool. The audience won't know that if in the video that you make, you don't show what is around the car meet. Another reason why this is important is because it gives your audience a different perspective 
of the me or what is going on because it gives them an idea of the atmosphere that is at that kami. Was it a family event? Was it not a family event? Was it a charity event? Was it a cruise? People don't really know this, well they'd probably know if it was a cruise. People don't know this unless you show them in your video. And how I recommend to get these shots of the surrounding environment is to shoot it in 60 FPS. Now whenever I film cars I shoot in 24 FPS because it looks the most natural but if you're shooting like the people at the event or what is happening around the event, 60 FPS looks the best that has been slowed down to 24 FPS. Now the reason why I'm not saying 120 or 240 even though it is slower and some people regard as better, for these shots 120 and 240 FPS just looks too slow, it just doesn't look right. 60 FPS slowed down to 24 FPS still keeps energy in the video without making it stop. You'd have to try it out for yourself or watch a couple of people to actually understand that 120 FPS or 240 FPS just doesn't look right in car edit videos. In my opinion, that's something for you to take on board. If you don't want to follow that, then don't. It's your choice. But in my opinion, I think it looks better if it's shot in 60 FPS. And also this means you don't need a super expensive camera either, so that is always a bonus. Now onto my third point. Movement is key. The cars at the car meet are not moving, so you have to move to create energy. Now when I say movement, I don't mean camera shake or camera wobble or whatever. I mean nice, smooth movements in, out, up, down. Not the same movements, because if you make just the exact same movement for every single car, that video is going to be so boring, so there's going to be no interest in that video. I've seen some videos of people with really nice sliders that just have the same shots of every car sliding sideways. And it does look nice, but after a little while, it just gets a bit uninteresting. So I recommend coming up with different kind of shot types, work with the environment. You might be able to get something cool. You never know. Remember, you can go up, down, left, right, forwards, back, diagonal, around stuff. It's anything, any kind of movement that is smooth will help the video. Now, as you saw at the start of the video and what is next to me, I have a Ronin. Now, you may be like, oh, Adam, I don't have a Ronin, so I can't get movement in my videos. That's not how it works. I bought the Ronin because it makes my editing way easier, which it does, and you can get different shots with it. But the Ronin does get in the way, and I filmed heaps of car meets handheld. You can film handheld. Now, any kind of image stabilization is helpful, whether it be in your camera, on your lens, a gimbal, or different ways. I used to film with a monopod, and I would hold the camera and the modern pod down here and that would just make it more stable because yeah, it got different points of contact. But I filmed heaps of stuff handheld with my camera and they all look completely different to the videos that I film with that thing. And they both look equally as good. Filming handheld gives you lots of different options. You can get the camera in spaces where you wouldn't normally. You can do different transitions, like in-camera transitions, like where you whipped to the right and then it will transition to the next shot where you whip in. And basically just to show you the difference, here is one of the meets that I filmed handheld. That still looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, here is one of the meets I filmed with that thing. That also looks pretty good. They're just completely different styles of videos. All that thing does is open you up to a new style. That's it. Apart from filming rollers. <sighs> Since I mentioned rollers, let's talk about that. If you don't know what a roller or a rolling shot is, it's basically when with cars, when you're filming the car, it's driving on the road and you're hanging out of someone else's car, filming them as they drive. Rolling shot pretty self-explanatory. Basically, rolling shots with car meets can be helpful for going to the car meet, if that makes sense. So meeting up with a bunch of people before the car meet and then filming driving to the meet, that adds an extra element to your video. How you can do this is finding pre-meets or setting up your own pre-meet. And basically, it acts as kind of an intro to the video, an intro to the meet. Now, you will find this is very difficult to do without some kind of gimbal simply because you will be driving and there's a lot more bumps than if you're walking. The next thing that I want to talk about is planning out your filming. Now I don't mean planning as in storyboards or what kind of shots you want to get. I mean plan in your head 
as you're filming. The saying that I like to remember is you need to film to edit, not just film random clips. And what that means is the shots that you are filming, think in your head how it's going to be put together, how that video is going to look, and it actually does make a huge difference. Something that is very helpful is picking a song prior to filming, because if you know what song you're going to use, you know how fast it's going to be and what kind of shots you need to get and you can get certain shots that will work with that song. And planning in your head also allows you to kind of choose the tempo that you want the video to be. So you could choose a real calm kind of style with nice smooth shots, nice sl calming, slow music, that kind of thing. Or you could be fully hectic and have a real quick kind of edit and for that quick edit, you'll probably want heaps of movement, heaps of pull focuses. It will affect how you're filming if you plan that in your head prior to filming it. To give a very quick example of a faster edit of cars, here is one I filmed a while back with VL Turbo Cruise. And yes, Hectic Habib was there. But with this video that you're about to watch, you can tell the shots are different because the tempo is different compared to the previous ones that you've seen. So let's just roll that one now just so you can see the difference. That video wouldn't have worked if I had lots of slow moving smooth shots. Are you starting to understand my point here of planning in your head whilst you're filming? Because I hope you do because I don't really know how else to explain it. <laughs> but that is going to do for today's video. I've tried to make a video that isn't really on YouTube because there's lots of videos about taking photos of cars, editing and that kind of thing, but there's nothing really discussing how to actually film car meets. Little tiny subtle things that I've seen people do that I'm just like, if you just just change it a little bit and just be nicer, but you can't change it in editing because it happened when you filmed it. Remember to comment down below what you want to see next or any other tips for people that, have, that are watching this video that you think are also useful. So leave them down below. I obviously read them all because I'm not that big of a channel. <laughs> and yeah, don't worry, the vlogs are still here. I'm filming a vlog tomorrow. Um, I'm just making tutorials because I want to, so you can't stop me. I'll see you all in the next video. Catch you guys there.